Well, those of you who've listened to the show for a while know that I play this game called Paragon, which is a uh, MOBA, stands for Multiplayer Online Battle Arena. And in, in these games, you play with other people, with other human people, against other human people. And so Paragon is this five-on-five battle arena thing. It has different lane, has three different lanes that you're in and different characters and so forth. So anyway, I play this game and my brother and I were on online we're on our little headset things playing on our playstations playing this game the other day and we were playing this one game and we were playing with these two guys and we were actually doing okay in this game until all of a sudden these guys started getting annoyed and didn't think that we were doing what they thought we should do and started complaining and and just getting really belligerent in the in the chat because you have this little chat thing that you you can talk to each other on and so we ended up losing the game, and then afterwards, and that sort of is in these where you're playing with and against other people, that's sort of a thing that kind of happens, it's just kind of part of the deal, and that it was sort of a normal thing, but then afterwards, in the, the after sort of game chat after we lost, they just got really belligerent. So for example, one guy at one point was, apparently they're from South America, <laughs> and they were talking about 9-11, and how it was funny and how it was deserved and this this sort of thing. And, I mean, th- th- that sort of stuff doesn't bother me because I know what he's doing. I know he's just trying to rile, rile me up and, and, and whatever. But it sort of gives you an idea of the level that it had sort of stooped to. So these guys just sort of went off and were just like, whatever, these guys are idiots. And so we went on to the next game. Well, it was sort of one of these instant karma situations because – that very next game, it so happened that those two guys were now on the other team playing against my brother and I. And I came down my lane, which happened to be a one-on-one lane. And one of those guys was in my lane basically against me one-on-one. And it was the one that had been sort of the most belligerent uh, in the after-game chat. And so here I was now in this game with this sort of instant karma situation where this person who had been talking all this smack, I was now basically going against him one-on-one. And so I know it may sound a little silly, but I want to talk about that and how it's sort of a microcosm or an illustration of a, a larger sort of phenomenon that I've experienced in my life and how it relates to your web development career and how you can use all of that to help you generate extreme amounts of focus and motivation to help you grind through the the tougher things that you are going to have to do in this career, whether it's from learning how to code and the stuff you got to get through there, or some of the fear that you might experience in getting your first clients or applying for your first job, projects that are really tough and so forth. You can kind of go back to this well again and again and again and use it to remind you of sort of the mission you are you're on in life And again, allow you to have extreme focus and clarity and be able to grind through those tough times. So I want to share all of that with you in this episode. Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com. Welcome back to another episode of The John Morris Show. So as the title suggests, and as I've alluded to, we're going to be talking about this idea of revenge and how you can use that in your career to generate extreme amounts of focus and motivation and be able to really chase hard after the things that you want in life. And it's a long-term sort of focus and a long-term motivation. It's not this fleeting stuff. This is something that you can really use again and again and again. So that's what we're going to do in this episode. Of course, before I do that, I do want to encourage you to head on over to store.johnmorrisonline.com and get the coding training you need. You'll find all my courses over there, including my PHP course, my object oriented programming course, my login script, my Upwork 101, my spammer's guide to get more clients, which shows you sort of a guerrilla marketing method for getting traffic and getting clients. Again, all that's over at store.johnmorrisonline.com, including the Skillshare links, the Udemy links, if you want to take the courses on those sites. And as a regular listener of the show, you can get 20% off anything at the store using the coupon code JMO. Again, that's store.johnmorrisonline.com. I'd greatly appreciate that. All right, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive into this. So again, some of you who've listened to the show for a while know that growing up, I I grew up in a household that was, you know, I would say probably, I, I would go so far as use the word extremely poor. We were in a, in a pretty bad situation and it, it was a result of a car wreck that my dad was in and, and 
what happened to him after that and so forth. But I grew up in sort of a unique situation because my family was very poor, but we also happened to live in an area, my uh, family was Catholic, and we lived in an area where the local Catholic school happened to be the only one in a pretty large radius, and there were seven Catholic churches in that area that actively supported the school because they wanted, what they were after was any Catholic families in that area to be able to go to the school and not have money be sort of an issue. So even though my family was extremely poor, I, from about halfway through kindergarten till the day I graduated, I went to school at a private Catholic school. And again, it was primarily because of the diocese uh, paying for it. So I was in a unique situation where I was going to the school. I was, you know, again, my family is extremely poor, but I was sort of surrounded by a lot of kids who most of the families were a lot more well off, either middle class or upper, upper middle class, or some even well beyond that. And so growing up as a kid, as you might imagine, kids are sort of mean. I heard about everything that you could think of in terms of my situation of you know, how poor my family was, how my parents were losers, how I never grow up and amount to anything, how you know, I was destined to be poor all my life, just every mean thing that you could think of. I, it was I just constantly sort of drilled into my head by, by these kids. And you know, I've always been sort of a defiant person. <laughs> I've never been one to just sort of accept what other people say. Uh, and so that always sort of stuck with me. I, I would be lying if I say it didn't affect me at all, but it sort of always stuck with me and gave me this sort of uh, this desire to prove all of these people wrong, uh, an element of sort of revenge to be able to one day, you know, meet those people again and and tell them how wrong they were. And that's always been sort of this grander motivation in my life. And that is sort of why I wanted to talk about this this story of this game that seems silly, this this game that I play, because it again it's a microcosm of what i've experienced on a larger level in my life so as i mentioned we were playing this game and those two guys were now on the other team and as soon as i came down my lane and i saw this guy other guy in my lane i told my brother i'm like i don't even care about this game like i win lose we're just going to kill these guys as many times as possible we're just going to get revenge for all the stupid things that they said and it gave us this, and my brother was like on the same page. He's like, man, I'm just pissed off now. And, <laughs> and so he's like, I, he was totally on board. And so what it did is it gave us this extreme clarity on what we were going to do. Instead of worrying about everything else in the game and this, that, the other, we were just going to constantly go after these guys and kill them as many times as, as we could. And it gave, it gave sort of a motivation to, to, to do that and ended up that, we killed like the guy that was in my lane, I think what oh and six, and we just killed him over and over and over. The other guy, I think ended up like four and six, uh, and every time we saw him, we would just kill him and turned out that because of that, because we killed these two guys so much, uh, it benefited the rest of our team, and we ended up destroying the other team in the game. I mean, we just annihilated, I think we won in like twenty minutes, and so we sort of got our revenge. And again, that's sort of a microcosm of of the effect that revenge can have if used properly. Because as I mentioned, in my life, that's been something that's always sort of stuck with me. I can still remember vividly those moments when people said things to me when I was a kid and how it made me feel and my desire to prove that wrong. That's like that's a, a, a almost limitless source of energy that you can tap into and you can tap into it to remind you when you're starting to feel disillusioned, when you're starting to feel a little bit lost or unsure or just down, unmotivated, etc. to remind you what your grander mission in life is and what you're what you're pushing towards and it can give you extreme clarity and extreme motivation to sort of pick yourself back up and get back on the horse and and get back after it because you have this mission in life to prove these people wrong. So the point I want to make is that revenge is a lot of people shy away from the idea of revenge and say it's just this inherently 
evil thing that that we should totally avoid and try to re- rid it from ourselves and so forth. And I want to make the argument that while revenge certainly can take over your life and become a negative thing, it can also be a positive thing if used correctly, and it can be a nearly limitless source of motivation and energy to help drive you through those tough moments. And so don't be so quick to write off uh, this idea of revenge and, and using that as a source of motivation. Now, I think there's three things to do when it comes to all this of actually doing this. So the first thing is the obvious thing, which is you need to find what your revenge sort of is going to be. And it doesn't have to be this like super negative thing. I mean, mine isn't that I want to get revenge all, on all these kids and you know go do something, you know, uh, off the rails to them or something like that. I just want to prove them wrong, right? And and it's not even anymore as I've gotten older. It's not even anymore about them even seeing it. It's more now just about proving it to myself and 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 knowing that they were wrong in my own mind. And so it's become a real source of positive motivation for me. So you want to find your revenge, but uh, you want to make sure it's something that you don't want to make it up. Okay. You want to make sure it's something that is naturally emotional. So when you think about it, you just sort of naturally get worked up about it. Again, like I said, I can think of those moments when those kids said those things to me and it's something that I can remember how I felt and I don't have to sort of fake the emotions. They're just there naturally. So you want to find what that is for you and 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 sort of latch on to that a little bit. The second thing may sound a little weird, but it actually is important. And that is have some sort of daily r- ritual to remind you of what your larger mission in life is and to help you on a daily basis to get focused. So I won't, I won't lay out the contents of the email. You can sort of figure that out for yourself. And I think it's important that you create something, you write something that uh, has an impact for you and you're the best one to know what that'll be. But what I do is I, in Google inbox, they have, uh, you can snooze emails. So what I did was a while back, I wrote an email and I sent it to myself and it has some text that sort of reminds me of what what my focus and my mission in, in, li- in life is. And then every day, I, and then I, I snooze that email for 8 a.m. every day. And so what happens is, is the email come, pops up in my email inbox. I go through it. I read it. It's a part of my sort of daily ritual starting off each morning. It sort of reminds me and gets me in a, a motivated, focused state. And then I snooze it again for 8 a.m. the next day. And I just do that every sort of day. And it's become sort of a ritual for me. And again, it reminds me of what my fo- long-term focus is, what my motivation is, what you know, why I'm here doing what I'm doing. It sort of gets me in the right mindset to tackle the day. That's really important because it can be easy to lose sight of you know that that long-term mission if you're not constantly reminding yourself of it. So some sort of daily you don't have to do exactly that, but just some sort of daily ritual to remind yourself of what it is that you're doing with your life, why you're here. Just really focus on that deeper why because that's what that's where the motivation really comes from. And then the last thing is sort of a warning, which is you want to use it. You don't want to let it use you. So you, you have do have to be careful of letting it get to the point where it, it consumes you and you start doing things that maybe aren't you know, in your best interest or ethical or any of that sort of thing. You just want to make sure and and contextualize it properly that you're not trying to harm anybody. You're not trying to do anything like that. You're just using this as a source of motivation more than anything else. So again, use it. Don't let it use you. Now, of course, when we talk about all this and we're talking about web development, a big part of of you accomplishing your mission mission and, and getting what you want out of life is you actually learning the skills that you need to be able to do that. And in, in that vein, I do want to encourage you, if you haven't yet, to check out my PHP course at johnmorrisonline.com slash PHP. Not only because you're going to learn PHP at a level where you can actually get out there and start getting clients or getting jobs and start taking real steps towards that mission that you have for your life or the goal that you've set for yourself to accomplish. Uh, But you're also going to learn 
real programming concepts along the way, which I think is ultimately more important because languages are languages and they, you know, they have their ups and their downs and so forth. But programming principles exist across languages. So these are things you can apply to any language you, you use. And so you're going to learn those things and how to build professional applications inside the course, which I think is probably the most important uh, part of the whole thing. So it's going to help you, again, to get the skills that you need to actually take those steps to, to, to meet that mission uh, and get the things that you want out of life. So, again, you can learn more about that at johnmorrisonline.com com slash php that'll take you to the course actually over on udemy it has a special discount for listeners of the show that that'll just be sort of built right in that you can get so again johnmorrisonline.com slash php all right that's the show if you like the show i'd appreciate if you'd share it with someone who could benefit from hearing this whether it's a individual it's a group whatever i'd greatly appreciate that also all the past episodes Plus the subscribe links for Android, iTunes, TuneIn, all that you can find at johnmorrisshow.com. And if you'll rate and review the podcast over on iTunes, I'd greatly appreciate that. That helps sort of grow the show as well. And I will also give you module one of my PHP 101 course for free. You can get all the details for that at johnmorrisshow.com. Just click the start here link at the top. All right. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.